I'm Shovel and welcome to my channel. Today I'm playing a new app game. We're gonna be getting back to choices really soon, so don't worry. I know the episode's coming out pretty slow, but I'm gonna be trying to upload more often, so I wanna start some new games. Uh, so if you have any suggestions, leave them down in the comments. But today what we're gonna be starting is a game called Is It Love Drogo? Dro Drogo? I get this ad on my Tumblr for this game all the time. It's basically like Choices or Episodes, what is, you know, those games, but this one's Vampires. And I'm into that. Hi, welcome to Is It Love? Drogo? To continue, <laughs> tap on the text. I feel like there's gonna be a lot of mistakes in this one because I, I don't know where it comes from, but it's definitely one of the budget versions of Choices. No offense, if you want to sponsor this, please. You're now the heroine of your virtual love story. It's up to you to discover which choices unlock the secret scenes and their images. All right. Content. The last thing, as you go through the story, you use energy points. Can I buy more? Let's get on to the story. This lady's name is Miss Chocolate. Can we not? Great, just one last thing. I got it all. You need to tell me what you wish to be called. Oh, my bad. My bad. I didn't mean to yell. We're going to say Shelby because putting shovel's cringy, and that's not a real name. What is your surname? Grace. Done. Accept. Are you sure? Yes, I'm sure that is my name. Then welcome Shelby Grace, enjoy your adventure. Thank you, that was a weird face she made at the end. Ooh, <gasps> is that Drogo? Mm. <laughs> Sorry, Parker. Ooh, chapter one. University starts in three days. I'm excited and a little nervous at the same time. Nervous because I just arrived at Mystery Spell and I don't know anybody. Excited because I can't wait to start classes. All right, if you're going to a school called Mystery Spell, you can kind of see what's gonna happen. <laughs> My plane landed yesterday in the evening and the only thing I've seen of the town so far is this horrible motel room. Why am I staying in a motel? Am I? Where am I? As I'm exhausted, I could have slept anywhere. Impossible to sleep, I was far too anxious. Thanks to jet lag, I slept until noon. Let's say I'm gonna say I slept till noon. That's not even because of the jet lag. <laughs> Today I have to settle my registration formalities. For that I have to go to the admi admissions office at the university. What a program. What? What? <laughs> it's rather different. Amazing. What? That looks normal. That looks like a university. Why is that a big deal? The architecture of the building facing me is really impressive. I love this mixture of modern and antique styles. They're very in your face about the way they're wording these things. Between the red brick building and the sculpted columns at the atmosphere is really different, chic, and studious. Like that's so on the nose what, who wrote this? And was it translated from a different language? I look at the pads lined with trees and area of grass. Nice place, I'm not the country type. This isn't, this isn't the country. Look at the building! Nice place. It's very welcoming. I feel immediately in harmony with this place. I can already imagine myself spending my time here. I was hoping this was gonna be like really good, like choices, but it's feeling like it's gonna be like, mm. The campus seems huge. It looks like a neighborhood in its own right. I hope I don't get lost. I managed to find my way to, thanks to the signposts, or I decided to go for a walk. I'll find it. I like that. Let's go for a walk. I find it without any real problem and push- So that didn't matter. <laughs> Why did I go for a walk? I was hoping to meet cute boys. But after about 15 minutes, it becomes obvious. I have no idea where I am. All the corridors look the same. I feel a little lost. Which way should I go? I want to know what I look like. <gasps> That's not me. I wish though. Girl. When do I get to decide what I look like? Do I get to do that in this game? I hear footsteps coming up behind me. A young girl comes forward. She's very beautiful. Oh yeah. Can I do that? Can I do braids? Would that look weird? Maybe you might find me trying that tomorrow. She's got an eye-catching, trendy look about her. I can feel her energy. Unlike me, she seems to know exactly where she is. Maybe she could help me. Is this a love interest? Because I'm already falling for her. <laughs> I'm looking for the admissions office, but I'm having a little trouble finding my way. You're new? Oh yeah. Yes. Why would I say no? That's. Is it that obvious? Let's say I haven't seen you around before and I've lived here forever, so it's not hard to guess. Don't worry, I'll show you where it is. I have to go there too. By the way, my name's Sarah. Shelby. She takes me to the admissions office. Once outside the door, I take the papers out of my bag and Sarah grabs them. 
I let her take them smiling. Back, go ahead, make yourself a home. What are these? What are these options? I let her take them? I don't know. I watch her until she lets out an excited squeal. It startles me and I stare at her with round eyes. She's a little weird, this girl. You're enrolled in the course Myths and Legends. Me too! This girl is mysterious, playful, and explosive at the same time. The complete opposite of me, a bit like me. Oh, I wish. I'm gonna say the complete opposite, because in reality, she's everything I wish I was. My complete opposite, I'll have to adapt. I like her. As they say, opposites attract. Oh, well. <laughs> you seem a little anxious. Oh, always. <laughs> this girl reads me like an open book. It's not easy to move to a city where you don't know anyone. Well, that's not quite the case. You know me now. Ask her about herself, thank her. Let's ask, I wanna find out about this girl. You're right, and you, you've lived here for a long time, is that right? Since forever. I know mysteries spell like the back of my hand. Would you like me to give you a guided tour? Hmm, yeah, I wanna, what kind of college is called mystery spell? Mm-hmm, that doesn't scream vampires at all. Maybe later, I already have a busy evening ahead. Girl, no you don't, you don't know anyone. I committed myself to something before arriving, but when I arrived yesterday evening, I was so exhausted that I rushed into the first motel that I came across. If it's that bad, I can put you up until you find something else. Ooh, don't be gross. That's kind of you, but don't worry, I found a place as an au pair in a local family. What does that mean? Oh, that's like a nanny, right? I'll take care of their little girl, and in exchange they give me accommodation, and it's also a good way to help pay my school fees. Who's the family? Maybe I know them. Tell her, hesitate. Tell, I don't, she, tell her. I can tell her, I may have made a friend. She's not gonna kill me, I hope. Bartholi. Okay. <laughs> An old family born and bred here, from what I understand. Sarah is transformed before my eyes. She looks like she's seen a ghost. I put my hand on her shoulder. Everything okay? She gets up quickly and backs away from me. <gasps> no, no, it's nothing. I've just remembered I have something to do. Maybe she's not a vampire. Maybe she's just living among them. I don't know. Look how cute she is when she blushes. Do I have a crush? <laughs> Sarah is really weird all of a sudden. Well, even weirder than before. Maybe she's a witch. I'm getting witchy vibes off her outfit. I let her go, I catch up and insist. We'll let her go. Shit, what? We're about to find out why this just happened, so... Okay, as you like. We'll probably see her again. Not odd at all. And with that, she literally flees. I just don't get it. I zap the bus and decide to go on foot. Or I take the bus. I want to walk places. I want to experience things while I'm walking, but I swear if I just end up there and they skip the walking part, I'll be mad. With a bit of luck, I'll start recognizing the streets and neighborhoods a bit. As I stroll, I think back to Sarah's curious attitude. I saw how badly she reacted to the name Bartholi. Bartholi? Bartholi. Bartholi. We'll figure it out. Was I imagining it? Time to go back to the motel and order a taxi. When I arrive at the Bartholis, I'm never gonna say that a normal way. Daylight has gone. I take my suitcase out of the trunk and pay the taxi. I stand a moment and watch him drive away. As I go through the gates of the impressive property, I stop short. This was not what I expected. It must be nice to live in this kind of place. It feels like a real fairy tale manor. Better than Hollywood homes. Is she from California? Girl, same! The wind suddenly gets up and rustles in the leaves of the trees. It's not very reassuring. I shiver and glance over my shoulder. The park is plunged into darkness. I can barely see my feet. I hunt through my bag looking for my cell phone. I dial my contact number for the Bartholis. Barth- Bartholi? I don't know. The ringtone echoes in my ear. Go on, be nice, answer. I try again and again, in vain. When I look up to the sky, some big black clouds cast a shadow across the moon. The sound of a wolf howling in the distance makes me jump out of my skin. My imagination is playing tricks on me. I wasn't dreaming. Well, no, I'm not dreaming. I think my imagination is playing tricks on me. It's probably nothing. It's vampires. It can't be a wolf. There aren't any wolves around here. Are there? I take a hold of the banister of the superb stone stairway that leads up to the entrance. As I climb the steps, I get a strange impression that I'm being watched. I look around. I force myself not to look. I want to look around. Someone behind me. I think I see a glow. No, I'm imagining things. I can't see anybody, just me in the shadows. I get to the doorway and lift my hand to knock, but another shiver runs through me. I hesitate. What is that? No doorbell? Just me a metal ring in a gargoyle's mouth. I'm nervous, but I can't help admiring the quality of the metalwork. 
I take a deep breath and grasp the knocker in my hand. I knock three times. The sound seems to echo inside the walls. After several minutes waiting and feeling foolish, I go to knock again. No need. The door opens, making me jump suddenly. I find myself eye to eye with a pair of magnetic hazelnut eyes. Mmm. I don't like his sweater, though. <laughs> I don't know him. I've never seen him before. You are new here. You've never seen anyone before. The aura of this guy is really mysterious, slightly oppressive even. He doesn't say a word, but just stands there, staring at me with a bored look on his face. After a long silence, I realize that I'm just standing there, gaping with my eyes popping out. It's the first meeting, and I'm not making a good impression. Come on, Shelby. Get a grip! I cling to the strap of my bag and try an encouraging smile. Greet him, keep quiet. Let's say something. We're being really weird. Uh, hi. Good evening. I'm Shelby. I told you that I was coming tonight. Um, I'm the new nanny. Do you never stop talking? Ew, stop. That's rude. Um, blushing. <laughs> no, well, if, but, I really look like a complete idiot. Well, he doesn't care about what I have to say. At least that's clear. His silence accentuates my embarrassment. His beautiful hazel eyes are still on me. I suddenly feel clumsy and awfully uncomfortable. Me too. I was hired by Mr. Bartholi. Bartholi? Bartholi. Bartholi. I don't know. To take care of little Lori. I'm not one of those popular girls that you notice at first glance. But still, no one has ever treated me with so little regard. Ignore it. Do not let him do this to you. <gasps> okay, what, what type of girl do we want to be here? Do we want to... Be the shy, like, mm, mm, you know. Or do we want to be bold and be really outspoken? I'm going to ignore it. Maybe that's bad. It doesn't matter. We're going to end up with him anyway. That's how these games work. <laughs> Is there a problem with the job? Is it still okay? Or maybe... Without giving me time to finish, he abruptly turns away from me and walks off. Rude. Uh, and me? What am I supposed to do? I go in. I stay put. I'm going to go in. Because I think this is a test. If I was also a vampire, I wouldn't be able to go in without being invited. You know, that's how they say that works. So I'm going to just go in. After a deep breath, I go in. In the distance, I hear him talking to someone else. Nikolai, the little thing for Lori's here. Excuse me. Little thing? You don't have enough energy to continue. Excuse me! <laughs> it already used up all my energy. How? Where? Okay. I mean, I'm going to buy more. Now I'm really starting to lose patience. But I can wait a few more minutes. But if the situation doesn't sort itself out quickly, I'll go back to the sordid motel. I just managed to keep myself from snarling. Oh, okay, maybe there are more than one. <laughs> Hello. At last, a young man comes towards me. Nothing like the one who welcomed me. His face is softer, his very long hair darker, and his eyes hazel. Yet a certain darkness emanates from him. Another eccentric. I just love it. I'll say he's eccentric. Good evening. Forgive me, I was supposed to greet you, but when I'm with Lori, time just flies past. Even his way of speaking is strange. What with the house and its occupants, I feel like I've landed in a place that's completely out of touch with reality. I am Nikolai, the eldest son of the Bartholi family. He holds my hand a little longer than necessary, which troubles me slightly. I leave it where it is. I withdraw it quickly, embarrassed. We're going to be embarrassed. We're going to play, sh play shy. The touch of his hand disconcerts me. Pleased to meet you. I'm Shelby. I give a more relaxed smile. At least Nikolai seems friendly. Despite everything I've just been through, I'm relieved. For a moment I was worried I'd missed out on the opportunity. I'd have been back at square one. I need this job, I know it, and it doesn't matter if these people are a little weird. I just need to get used to it. So Lori is your younger sister? Yes, that's right. And you also have a brother. In truth, I have two, Drogo, whom you've already met, and Peter. Without waiting for my reaction, he beckons me to follow him. Ooh, we're going inside. Come on, I'll show you your apartments. I follow him again. The sound of melancholy music seems to be coming from far off through one of the doors. Where's that music coming from? It's a little sad, but pretty. Oh, it's Peter. He loves to play this type of tune. Already, I'm out of energy. All right, we're going to buy a buttload. <laughs> Take a lot of energy walking through these hallways. At last, he stops and opens one of the doors. Here we are. Welcome to your new home. He stands back to let me pass. The first thing I notice is the size of the room. It's so big. 
<gasps> a little dated. Excuse me, that's rude. I love it. I love the huge window overlooking the garden and all the mirrors that make it look bigger. I spot the rest of my luggage stacked in the corner of the room. Nikolai hurries to put down the suitcase I brought with me. The rest of your things arrived yesterday, as expected. I'll let you settle in while I see what we can get you for dinner. He walks away down the corridor, then quickly retraces his steps. I'll introduce Lori to you tomorrow morning. By this time, she'll be asleep, and I don't want to wake her up. Of course, let her sleep. I don't mind meeting her later. I collapse on the bed to recover from my emotions. Daydream, settle in. I'm just going to settle in, because that seems like a waste of time to daydream. Now that I'm here, I might just as well settle in comfortably. On opening my second suitcase, I stop still for a few seconds. I lift out one of my most precious possessions. It's a snow globe, or it's a postcard. I'm going to say it's a snow globe. I unpack it cautiously and shake it up and down, smiling sadly. I have a whole collection. This one is my favorite, the one my parents brought for me from Paris. They travel constantly with their work, and each time they brought me back a souvenir of the town they just visited. They were both killed in a car crash as they were coming home. Looking at these objects can still be painful, but I'm capable of leaving it behind. Think about something else, think of them. We're gonna move on. <laughs> That's too sad. But I'm not gonna spend the whole evening dwelling on the past. I've got other things to do. I turn back to my still half-full suitcase. I take out my books and CDs, which I lay carefully on the shelves. I then tackle the last bag which contains my toiletries. As I go into the ensuite bathroom, I stop short. It is super luxurious. I love the marble basin and bathtub from another age. At least I won't have to worry about my comfort. After putting everything away, I go back into the bedroom and look around to get the feel of the room. It's my home. <laughs> I put a framed picture of my parents on the bedside table and sit on the bed. I stare at it for a moment. They're very detailed. Why, there's so much happening. Can we move on? I want to see all of the boys again. <laughs> Everything will be all right. I lay down and stare up at the ceiling for a long time. I'm knackered, but I'm happy to be finally settled in. All of a sudden, I sense a presence. Is it one of the boys? I think we're going to have to stop it there because it's been already a long while in this video. And can I save somewhere? Okay, well, <laughs> I might have just broken it. Uh, hopefully that's saved. That's gonna be it for today's video. Leave a like if you enjoyed watching. Tell me down in the comments if you want more of Is It Love Drogo? Because we really only scratched the surface of that story and I'm intrigued. I'm gonna be uploading more often, trying to upload every single day, even double upload some of the days so we get all of our good choices episodes, all of our deep end, and some other good Minecraft and other games and things. So don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you guys next time. 